Joanna Fall Walker and I am the Programme Director for the MSC Risk Disaster and Resilience. What makes this programme unique, what makes it different, I think is that it's a really multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary programme that really aims to go across traditional subject boundaries. Because here in the IRDR, we believe we need this approach in order to tackle the problems of local and global disaster risk. Because of this nature, it means you're taught by a wide range of experts in many different fields, coming from different backgrounds, physical, social sciences and others, um, both from staff here within the IRDR, across UCL, and we also bring in um, external lecturers from industry, the private sector, government, NGOs um, and those practitioners in the field to help enhance the programme. The Risk Disaster Resilience Programme has six core themes. Four of these are common across all IRDR programmes and two are specific to this programme. These themes are quantifying risk, understanding vulnerability, multidisciplinary holistic approaches from theory to practice, managing disasters, the physical and science of hazards, and building resilience. I'm now going to go through these themes to sort of talk a bit more about what does that actually mean. So the first one, quantifying risk. What is risk and how do we measure it? Risk is a term that's used all the time in the media and widely uh, known, but what, what does it mean fundamentally? And in order to understand risk, in order to apply risk reduction techniques, we need to be able to quantify risk. So how do we do this and what are the knowns and what are the unknowns? What are the different components of risk? So by this I mean exposure, so what? Is that people or things being exposed? Um, what are the hazards, whether that be earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunami, windstorms, terrorist attacks, cybercrime? What are these hazards that we're protecting people against? Vulnerability, so whether that means sort of fragility curves of buildings, i.e. how easily do buildings fall down if a hazard occurs, or the fra uh, how vulnerable are people, whether that means individuals or society as a whole. And we want to bring these together, how do these different components interplay with each other in order to make a, a risk equation, and how do we quantify that? The next theme, understanding vulnerability. This is really cool because it's not just about hazards occurring, it's about how do they affect people, how do they affect infrastructure, how do they affect buildings, and what happens in response to a hazard. And we have many researchers here really looking into this problem, both um, here in the UK and all over the world. And we do have some researchers looking particularly at vulnerable groups, whether that be people with disabilities, we have the Gender and Disaster Centre, and we have people looking at the elderly, various groups um, in there as well, and lots of students choose to do projects on that topic. Um, as I said at the beginning, a multidisciplinary approach is fundamental to us here at the IIDR, so multidisciplinary holistic approaches. How do we apply this? How do we do research across different disciplines? How do we develop a common language so we can all talk to each other all the way from primary researchers, possibly in the physical sciences, engineers, all the way through to policymakers and residents actually living in affected areas. We need to be able to communicate in this common language. Managing disasters, well, that's what it's all about. You know, we, we need to be able to apply emergency plans when disasters happen in order to make sure we reduce the risk there and then. But in this programme, particularly in the Risk Disaster Resilience Programme, we really want to understand the physics and social sciences of hazards. Now, this isn't going to the level where you might do research on them. This is more thinking in your future career, how do you understand what science has gone into any policy? How do you understand the science that has gone into producing hazard maps or risk maps? What happens when someone presents something like this to you and you need to make a decision building on these? So we go through these different hazards and we try to make sure we understand so that you know what questions to ask, what do you believe, what do you not believe, what's fact, what's conjecture, what has disagreement, what has agreement, so that you can make informed decisions and help to communicate these to others. And then the final theme for this programme is building resilience. And, and to me, this is just the fundamental part of everything we do. It's not just about managing a disaster when it happens, it's about building resilience beforehand so that we can genuinely reduce risk. That, that is our overall aim. So that sort of tells you about the core values of this whole programme. And this is taught through a range of compulsory modules, including skills modules, 
and some optional, program, um, optional modules, which are all available on our website to have a look at what they are. And you can see how they fit into these different themes. Um, they're the compulsory modules are those that we think, you know, what we want to teach you and what we think you ought to learn. And then there are optional modules, so you can tailor the program to your specific interests as well. And often people use those optional modules to really decide what they want to do their independent research project on. So you have eight taught modules, uh, modules are courses, um, or teaching blocks if you like, where you learn about these different topics. And then a third of your time and a third of your marks for this programme are dedicated to your independent research project. And that's your chance to really go in and tackle a specific programme, um, a specific problem, I should say, that, that really excites you and that you really, really want to get your teeth into. How are you taught? So I mentioned we have these core sort of modules, optional modules, and then your independent research project. Um, we do have lectures, we have class discussions. Most of our lectures are very interactive. We, we like to make you work, we like to hear from you. And as a lecturer on this program, it's something I really enjoy, is actually how much I learn from the students and how much you learn from each other, as well as what we can help you learn. So sometimes it's student-led activities, uh, sometimes it's staff-led activities, in the classroom, outside the classroom as well. So there are field trips based in the UK, and we also have had a scenario exercise run by one of our NGO partners, Rescue Global, and the students really like getting involved in that. Um, I don't know if there's much more to say at this point than I think the programme is really interesting. Students you know, come out from it. We have a great body of alumni who we're really proud of, who have gone on into careers in a variety of sectors. Um, so including local and national government, both in the UK and places such as Cairo in, in Egypt. We have those who work for sort of government policies or bodies or policy making activities, um, and fire and rescue authorities, the Global Risk Forum in Davos. Uh, we have people working in the private sector and catastrophe modelling at RMS, insurance, Barbican Insurance Group, consultancy firms such as PwC. Um, we have people who have gone on into NGOs, including Rescue Global and the Red Cross. Um, we also have people who have gone on further in academia, so are doing PhDs, both either here at UCL or, or at other universities. So we have a really wide body of alumni. It's a lovely community, and hopefully some of you will, will become part of that. <laughs>